2007 was the kind of when the team started to come together and the Rand Racing team was then started in 2008. It's a, like a big family, we, this, the core of the team is always the same. We know each other very well. We are like a very strong team. Our focus is very much on the racing and on the training days before where we have try and make a really structured day, every day just trying to tweak it just that bit better, bit better and bit better. We're here to have a good time, but we're also pretty focused on winning. And the great thing with this fleet is that you're sailing against teams like Quantum and Azura. And then in order to keep up, you just have to improve all the time. And if you don't improve, then, you know, we stagnate and that's something we wouldn't like. The philosophy of our team is that we want to kind of be very close as one team and believe that we win as a team, we lose as a team and we become stronger when we are recognizing every individual's strength. The emphasis within the RAND team is that you have all the tools are there so you can just get on and do your work properly. If you need to look at, analyze something then it's right there, there's the facilities there to go back, replay the race, replay the video of the race, learn from those decisions, what we saw and, and take it forward for the next day. We have our briefings in the morning, evening briefing before dinner and then over dinner maybe there's some, you know, we still talk about the racing and still having a good time. But you're spending time together on and off the water is so important. Our objective is to change the bow number. We don't like the number three, we want to have a lower number and if we can achieve that, we're going to be quite happy.
was New Zealand really too going all the way over yeah yeah they were blooming close they uh, they probably had a couple of degrees in the bag of angle but that's about it they, amazing save I think if we hadn't have had the experiences from the AC 45s and learning sort of how to water start the wing like um, like a windsurfer then it would have been blooming hard for them to save that it was pretty amazing what was the problem what happened so that their wing didn't pop through I'm not really sure I think maybe a slight mishap with the um, hydraulics but a bit of a combination of factors. I think the, the wing didn't pop, so the camber was the wrong way, which means it act effectively acts like an air brake and tries to pull the boat over. And then um, they just, I think the aero package as well, the wind gets underneath that, it's so big, the aero package. So it's many things all combining together, but it's, they were very lucky. I mean, they, their hearts would have been in their mouths for sure. my 40th Big Boat Series. My first one was in 1972 and I've done uh, almost all of them since then. And uh, it's just my favorite series of all the races I've done any place else in the world. In the time when I've done it, which is about 30 years, it's gone from a small middle Big Boats, uh, a lot of older maxi boats back in the day, from 25 to 40 boats sailing in the event. And now we've got uh, upwards of 100 boats on an average sailing in the event with a whole bunch of smaller boats, high performance boats. We've just tried to stay at the cutting edge of the sport and always have the latest, greatest boats show up and race. And that's what we continue to do. Uh, sometimes bigger boats show up, sometimes smaller boats show up. It just depends on the time frame and when boats are in Europe, when boats are in California, if it's a transpack year. So one thing the Yacht Club has always tried to do is maintain a forward-thinking attitude and make sure we change courses up, make sure we change the regatta format around just to make, maintain better sailing and new innovative sailing for the racers. Swiftsure is, uh, belongs to Cy Kleinman, who's been pretty active in it. He's got another Swiftsure that he bought down in San Diego. And then he had this boat commissioned and built, and uh, this is what he calls the race boat, and the other boat uh, he calls his wife's boat. We've been pretty active with the boat. Um, geez, we've done, I think, every series since uh, 1990, 1996 with the boat. The organizers that put the thing together, Rolex has just done a fantastic job over the years of making sure that we have everything that we need uh, to put on a really first-class regatta. This is the pinnacle event on the West Coast because everybody shows up to race in it. It's big breeze, it's awesome sailing. If you got to bring your A game to get around the racetrack to do well in the event, because it's just such a technical place to sail, which is why everybody comes. I'm just hoping that the uh, that the weather stays in and we get some breeze. We've kind of got ourselves painted into a heavy air corner rating wise, so the harder it blows, the better we go. I'm really looking forward to a lot more big boat series. We're looking forward to hosting a lot more big boats because it's just spectacular sailing. Everybody that comes here always says, shakes their head when they walk away going, that's the best sailing I've ever done. This is the 50th year of the Big Boat Series and we want to have 50 more.
Leg Zero is all about uh, preparing for the real race, so Volvo can check all their systems and the teams at the same time get a chance to check all their systems are ready to go for the main event. Okay, we're going to try to keep it simple and uh, see what we can uh, do to refine our systems and uh, learn more from uh, other teams. So we're feeling the pressure, but excited and focused on what we've got to do and uh, ready to start this big Volvo Ocean race. A very bad start, uh, my mistake, uh, but very good job uh, from the crew to come back to... First time I do a mistake. Huh? <laughs> we do this next time. It's next stop is Cape Town, and that's pretty exciting. Okay, and go, deploy! So I'm actually quite glad that we have this as a kind of trial run, because I guess it gets rid of some of the annoying nerves, and then when we go for the real leg, it will be just a good nerves. <laughs> It's going to be nice to square up against the other guys. They're all well prepared and, and you know, and big programs and everything else. But at the end of the day, I don't think that'll matter. We've got a good team and, um, and we're going to give it our best shot. Now this is what we really uh, came here to do, so... Fun two days ahead. back in the game and uh, quite nice to sail with the other boats. Welcome to the beautiful city of Marseille in the south of France, a province renowned for its culture, heritage and Mediterranean climate. This week Marseille is hosting Marseille One Design, a regatta that looks set to thrill as it sees four GC32s race in their own class as part of the Great Cup series. The event brings together four GC32 teams, all hungry to test out these impressive boats, Armin Strom, Team SPAC Solutions, Magic Marine and GDF Suez. One man who knows just what these boats can do is skipper of Team GDF Suez, Sebastian Cole. He broke the GC32 speed record earlier in the year and is looking forward to getting back out onto the water. Obviously, speed records are dependent of um, wind condition and so also sea state condition. Uh, Lake Garda, when we had uh, when they hit the, the, the record at 30, 38 knots around, uh, was with perfect condition, 25, 30 knots, bad water. I don't see really uh, this record falling down this week, but who knows, we'll see. The GC32s are smaller versions of the AC72s sailed in the America's Cup and are equally as thrilling. The race course being sailed this week is also the same layout as the America's Cup, making for some tight racing and hopefully some top speeds. The course also caters for the spectators, bringing the sailing close to shore and providing a magnificent backdrop of the town. The first day of racing was a mixed bag for the teams and an action-packed day all round. The standout team of the day was Armin Strom, skippered by Flavio Marazzi. The team won both practice races as well as their first two-point scoring races of the regatta. It's very easy to struggle on these boats because it takes a lot of time to, to prepare the boats, to get used to all the small um, 
trains, you have you can make your life much easier. And it's yeah, I think it practice is the key factor. You know, I think we did like 15 days with the more or less same team, and this is what pays at the end. Team Magic Marine had a testing day but enjoyed it nonetheless. The team had barely launched the boats when they were out racing. A good performance from the team considering the lack of practice. Skipper Misha Hameskirk recaps the day. We, we just put it together this day, uh, the boat. The team is new, the boat is brand new. We have never sailed together. So all that makes for a, a really interesting day. A lot of wind. So you can't you have no margin for error. Like, uh, error would be directly upside down. Teams GDF Suez and SPAC Solutions had a considerably more challenging day with boat damages and crew injuries. Team GDF Suez had to abandon their racing thanks to a broken J-shaped daggerboard. Meanwhile, SPAC Solutions reached top speeds in their boat but rammed a wave at full speed and tossed team skipper Laurent Lemaire overboard. The team recovered but not unscathed. So the first day of sailing did not disappoint, with plenty of thrills and spills and doubtless lessons learned to carry through to tomorrow. Stay tuned to see who can stay aboard and who will get some points on the board. but it was a good day. We, um, we only really had sort of one uh, bad race for the day out of, I don't know, six or eight or ten races or how many we ever had. It's sort of they all blend into one. I think the, uh, the big, big thing for us today um, was just uh, battling back into the races even when things weren't uh, necessarily in good shape. Um, the guys were really, really you know, positive on the boat, you know, great attitude and plenty of opportunities on this race course. So there's no, no race ever um, over and you've just got to keep um, chipping away when you can. group of our guys and their lingy guys uh, busting their masts it's sort of it's hard to know the reason why but you're obviously using a lot of Cunningham and a lot of uh, main sheet pressure as you're coming into the top mark and you know there's you know, quite a lot of load going around the mark but it's you know we haven't really seen that in the series before so well, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it to be honest it's um you know, it wasn't it wasn't extreme conditions by any means um, it's a difficult one I know on a small boat if you don't uh, these are cut off as you go around the mark you can often do the same thing but it's um you know these boats are pretty bulletproof and um, yeah just a real shame a bit of an odd one nice to come out of the day with some really really good results um, and also knowing that we can um, improve too so yeah very um, satisfied with the day but as always, lots to work on. Boys, you know, I think the boys did a great job today. We felt like we um, sailed the boat around the track reasonably well and you know, got on the right side of uh, you know, a few shifts and probably on the right side more than the wrong side, which um, you know, gave us a pretty reasonable result at the end of the first day. 